Righty righty. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, you probably can hear me without. Hey, how's everyone doing today? It is, uh, it is the Movember live stream, and I'm joined with a special guest. We've got Coach Molly. <laughs> ah! carefully pray for plant and frame let's i think we should try that one again <laughs> Oi. right coach molly how uh, how's everyone doing today mm. Oi. No? Yes. sorry molly doesn't want to be on the stream um <laughs> how's everyone doing let me know in the chat where you're from what you're up to what you're doing um i'm doing very well i think yeah all, all things being said i'm good it is the last day of uh of mustacheness so <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna miss it or not uh, but i just wanted to have uh, a start to the stream where we could have a chat and really the, there isn't anything in particular itself to chat about we're just gonna chat about anything anything that comes up you have any questions that you want to ask want to talk about um and yeah and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be as as honest as I can be on, uh, uh, on stream as well. So that's kind of the point. So where we got we got Brazil, Mexico, Amsterdam, Maryland, Germany, Canary Islands, Canada, New York City. Is that, I don't know if that's a country, but um, we're allowed. Poland, Vancouver, New Jersey, Orlando, Serbia, everywhere. Everywhere, man. South Africa, India, Switzerland, Chicago. So many. Um, so thank you, everyone, for, for joining in. Um, who's participated? Or well, has anyone participated in November? I think this is a bit of a... It seems to have been, I don't know, certainly anywhere in the UK, has been like a little bit less um, less popular than it once was. Because I'm now getting to the point now is like, if you used to have a moustache in the month of November, people would be like, oh, he's doing, he's doing Movember. That's why he has a mustache. Whereas the past month, I've walked into places with a mustache and people are like, who's the creepy guy with the mustache and why is he 300 meters in a school? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, I don't know. It seems to be a bit more common, but has, has anyone participated? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I hate it or not. I don't, I don't think it, it's definitely not going to stay. It's, it's going. But um, it hasn't, it hasn't, I don't, I don't hate it anyway. I'll say that. <laughs> I, I also i'll um admit that i actually cannot grow any other facial hair so <laughs> who's the hipster fuck off <laughs> um th my, my like i don't grow any facial hair like anything down the side anything at the front i think all the facial only the only facial grow, facial hair that i grow is is on my mustache so as well as hoping to support a good cause with movember and chat a little bit about men's health men's mental health as well um you know it's, it's the only time of year where I don't look too awkward with a moustache. So anyway, I think all I was planning on doing was saying hi and answering any questions. So if you have any questions, as I said, let's leave them in the chat and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, we'll go on. <laughs> Why would you say the Winter Bulk video is doing so well? It's a, I wait up. Number one, very observant you to notice that one. And um, I don't really know why that one particularly went off. Like, I always thought that the majority of kind of the people who watch YouTube videos are on here on this on this particular channel was to do with sort of more flexibility, mobility stuff. I, I think like that's the majority. And then probably a smaller amount would be the body weight stuff. And then an even smaller amount still would be the weirdos who do handstands. Um, I don't know. The winter bulk seemed to to hit something, and I think everyone, yeah, everyone's up eating a bit more food and gaining a bit of weight. So, um, I've certainly, maybe as well, like it, it came across better because probably the last, apart from the last month, the six months prior to that, uh, was a little bit of a struggle to make videos. Uh, certainly, like the more vloggy ones, where I was kind of sharing kind of what I was up to. Um, I just wasn't in the right headspace where I had too many other things going on, and I think maybe that came across in the videos themselves. Um, whereas I've really like I've been super into training again like really inspired to, to train again uh, part of the winter bulk and I've been enjoyed making those videos so maybe that was was part of the reason why 
Minoxidil for beard growth. Do you know what? I used to be disappointed that I couldn't grow a beard, but I've kind of just accepted that I'm a pretty hairless human being. Uh, as long as I've got hair up here, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I can, I can deal with not having a beard. Uh, what are my new flexibility goals? At the moment, I am working on bridge, which there is a reason that there isn't a uh, a bridge tutorial. Well, there is a bridge tutorial, but there isn't. There's a reason there's not many much bridge backbending content on this channel, and that is because I have a piece of wood for a spine. <laughs> my my spine likes bending forwards, but backwards it just it just doesn't work. So uh, that one's been a bit of a grind to develop. But I'll share something about that in, in the future. But it's one of those things that people seem to either have or don't have, and unfortunately. I, I don't have it. I'm here for the body weight and the food. We're all here for the body weight and the food. Um, I'd actually love to do some more some more cooking videos. I think a lot of people have been commenting that. I think maybe that's why the bulk series was going well. Um, I'd love to share some more cooking content. I actually saw anyone here. Anyone? Um, let me know in the chat. Does anyone subscribe to Joe Delaney, aka what's it? What's his Instagram handle? Shred Bundy. <laughs> Uh, I've chatted to Joe a little bit and I enjoy watching his videos. He's like more traditional bodybuilder aesthetic sort of thing. He's just a sound guy, uh, but he put up a little like cooking with Joe video. and I really enjoyed that video and I was like half tempted to kind of do the same thing. So if you've, if you've watched that, let me know. Uh, and I, I might make it happen. We'll see. We'll see. His meal prep is good. His meal prep is definitely good. I do agree. I, I like Joe. He's just like, he's just a really down to earth guy. Um, so originally this, this live stream, um, was actually, I was going to produce a video and I was going to basically chat to a bunch of people kind of around mental health and training. And I was kind of, and I got Joe, I asked Joe, Joe was keen to do, to, to chat about it and kind of the impacts of social media on how you think about physique uh, and that sort of things. And I was also going to talk to Gabo Saturno. If you guys know Gabo, he also makes calisthenics sort of content. He makes uh, flexibility content as well. Uh, and he's, he himself has been through quite a transformational journey when it comes to how training impacted his lifestyle changes so he's he's a really um you know probably an under underappreciated aspect of, of his of his journey as well so maybe we'll still make that video but it's it's not something that i personally um struggle with so it was like I, d I didn't really feel comfortable talking about it or giving it like not never giving him advice but you know what i mean like it's, i i understand i don't understand the struggle that people go through it i'd like to give a platform to people who do um so it's just really hard to to kind of find those people to talk about that uh, and also who are prepared to talk about it as well. Um, the house renovation. Somebody said you should share more videos about the house renovation. The house renovation is, is non-existent at the moment. Um, <laughs> maybe that will be explained in a future video. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a struggle right now. Right. There's, oh, man. There's been so many so many comments. So thank you for everyone who's, who's, who's joining in on the on the live, asking questions. Um, I'll do my best to like answer everyone's, but it's just been so many and I've rambled and it's, it's not helping. <laughs> Somebody else also mentioned Joe Delaney's, uh, bulking series from 2019. Yeah. Like Joe, Joe's content is really great. Um, and as I said, like he's just honest with it. Is there a benefit to building up to 20 chin ups and 50 push ups in a row before moving on to strength exercises? Eh, yes and no. It really depends on what you're after. But certainly, I would say like twelve as a guy, twelve as a minimum for a for a uh, female athlete. I would say probably six. That would be like the minimum that I would work to as as without anything else. And then from there, I'd be like, cool. Let's let's see like if we can do some some fancy stuff now. <laughs> what was the what was the reaction uh, of the mustache to your friends and family? Okay, so I was chatting about this. At the moment, I think I have an approval rating of about two percent with females. And I'm going to say generously 6% with, with, with men. <laughs> it's, the mustache has not been kind to me. It's, it's not been a good, it's not been a good November guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. As I said, for some reason, November just doesn't seem to be as popular. And people are just like, who's the weird guy with, with mustaches? And, and yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. What exercise movement do you enjoy the most? Probably handstands. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be real. Handstands are just fun. I, I really enjoy doing handstands, and I've also got a newfound love 
for squatting at the moment as well. I'm really enjoying actually doing some heavy leg training. Like it's something that I've ignored for a few years. And uh, I think we do is body weight training. Like you just end up focusing on more upper body stuff, but like sometimes it's it's fun to lift heavy stuff as well. So I've I've been getting back into that. Um, but man, I'm I'm weak, embarrassingly weak. <laughs> I use your channel to try and gain some muscle and I'm currently on month three of doing the at home program. That's awesome, man. I'm, that's great to hear. Uh, I really hope the program helps. I think somebody mentioned about doing a, a new at home program like at the beginning of the year. I might do one like for January sort of time, kind of a refresh because it gets boring doing the same thing for, for a long period of time. So the most important thing is you do something. Uh, so if we can keep it interesting, then that might help everyone out. How do you program everything to improve in all aspects consistently? That is the challenge. I think I actually made a video not so long ago basically talking about like how to, how to combine lots of goals at the same time. Ultimately, you don't really end up training for lots of things at the same time. You maybe pick like one or two things to focus on and then everything else is kind of on maintenance and you're just doing a little bit. Some, you're still doing your training, but you're just not really pushing those aspects massively hard. So for example, when I was training the one-arm handstand, everything else was just like, super simple i was just literally my strength training was just handstand push up when i'm like or chin up and that was basically it there was, not, there was not much else to it more than that flexibility work again kind of simple so um you, ultimately if you the best way to train everything is to understand how to maintain stuff that's like the the, the, the challenge it's like how do you not lose something when you're trying to focus on something else uh, and the general rule of thumb is you want to you want to train about one sixth of the volume it took you to attain that thing so let's say, throwing off the top of my head here, you were doing two sessions a week where you're doing like five sets a session. Actually, no, that makes it easy. Six sets a session on a strength move. Say hands and push-ups. We're doing six sets of two twice a week. If you did then after that, the sixth of that, two sets twice a week or four sets once a week, that would probably, right? Was my math just really, yeah, my math was way up. Two sets a week should be enough in theory to maintain that skill. So about one sixth of the volume um, and that, yeah, massively, massively helps. So don't don't try and do it all at once. It's, that's that's the worst way to do it. Oh, shameless self promotional plug. Uh, I have a new coaching platform that released, which is all about combining balance, strength, and flexibility. So it's on the website if you want to check out. But this is this stream isn't really about that, so I'm not going to talk any more about it. Any thoughts on crypto? Um, anyone else trading crypto? Let me know in in the chat. I'm sure like. I feel, I feel like most people I speak to these days, like even even people who are like fifty six years old, are like, "So what's this Bitcoin about then?" Um, yeah, I did I did trade some um, some crypto. I had some Bitcoin and I had some Ethereum, uh, and I can't remember where I bought it. And then everything crashed like probably earlier this year. I lost a load of money. I didn't sell at that point, but I sold kind of when I went back to uh, to even. I, I I had paper hands. I did not have diamond hands. Um, if I kept it, I would have probably done all right. But, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing, right? Especially with trading. Any advice for s swimmers to stay flexible? Um, not really. I've got a swimmer's routine, but I think I think swimmers, obviously, the most important thing is their shoulders. So doing um, things like lap pullovers, straight arm lap pullovers, classic bodybuilding exercise would be amazing. Making sure pecs and, and that shoulder position is still kind of open. Even like chest flies, lap pullovers, that, that's the sort of thing that's going to really help with, with swimming, I think. As well as just like generally getting stronger with chin-ups. Uh, does, does wonders. My cousin actually uh, swims at a very high level in, in America and um, he stopped swimming for about six months, did a bunch of chin-ups, got really strong and he went back and like hadn't swum in months and he, he beat many of his times just from getting stronger with chin-ups so shout out shout out to robbie <laughs> um what's the sport that you'd really like to try i've actually um i'm planning on taking up judo or well, not not bjj or brazilian jiu-jitsu which i think is probably more pom popular these days but like traditional judo um if anyone does judo let me know um that's what i was planning on taking up i was going to start it last year covid kind of ruined all of those things about like close contact sports but it seems to be a little bit more lenient um and it's something that i would love to get into i did when i was younger and i think like that aspect of doing some martial arts like the ability to know that you could mess somebody up if you needed to or if you could protect yourself i think is a really important thing um certainly from like a 
a well-rounded personal development sort of side of things which sounds a bit cheesy but you know just personal perspective um yeah i think judo would be really cool because i'm not necessarily into like striking um uh, or yeah like boxing that sort of stuff taekwondo karate like judo just it's, it's like wrestling um grappling sort of style of I, I personally would prefer anyway that's just my opinion on things um I, martial arts is, is is something that's i find interesting but i've never massively got into but i know like a lot of people certainly love in that space i think it's i think it's a really interesting way like as i said i think it's important to know that you could defend yourself or you could mess somebody up if you had to and then having the like self-control to be able to not do that because being weak not having that ability and not using it isn't the same thing it's not it's not a virtue but having that like aggression but being able to control it that's a, that's a virtue right i have no idea why i'm the questions there's so many people in the chat this is amazing um thanks <laughs> thanks everyone for joining also by the way i do think one of the top links in the description is to uh, november i'm going to be donating donating myself at the end of the stream i'm going to donate one pound for every thousand subscribers um i wouldn't necessarily say you need to donate probably the best thing you can do is have a chat with your friends if you have some friends male or female doesn't really matter like if you know somebody's struggling reach out to them ask them how they're doing grab a coffee with them grab a drink with them see what's up that's the best thing you can do rather than donating stuff uh, on the internet but if you do want to donate would highly appreciate it um yeah <laughs> let's let's get back to the questions you guys oh my god <laughs> where is molly molly has disappeared unfortunately is she? oh no she molly's molly is asleep on the bed if i if you if i should wake up molly if you want to see the dog then let me know because i'll i'll wake her up but at the moment she's asleep she's she's just finished destroying some things <laughs> which is currently what she does she destroys stuff for an hour then she sleeps and destroys stuff and sleeps so fortunately she's decided to not destroy stuff during the live stream and sleep which is which is definitely uh helpful any tips on not quitting the handstand journey i had some lucky five second holds but don't seem to be crossing much off the wall um yeah it's a hard one uh handstands is basically it's insanity you're doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results you just need to you need to persevere and just set that time aside and and try to have fun with it um it is frustrating but i think like you have to have a certain mentality to be good at handstands and um understand that this frustration you're feeling right now is very much part of it and that's why not everyone can do handstands because it's not just something you can just do. You have to work on and, and you have to get through that uh, annoying part. Um, so just put the work in. Maybe maybe instead, what I would recommend to you actually, here's my recommendation. Rather than have sets, just have a time window. Like commit to doing 15 minutes or 20 minutes at the start of each session dedicated to handstands. And that's like your time, no more, no less, regardless of how it's going. Maybe if it's going really bad, do a little bit less and then just go do some bicep curls to make yourself feel better. But like on the most part, set some time aside, do handstands for that time, and that's it. Cut it off there. Go do your other session or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and I think that like maybe mentally is you're less reliant on your performance and you just know you're going to set aside some time. Are you a fan of the 45 degree back extension for a weighted stretch? I think back extensions are great for like a decompression as well. Um, I also quite like it, like a 90 degrees on like a GHD. Um, I think it's a really nice one for like just letting gravity do its thing but obviously ultimately like hanging is probably the best thing but yeah that that GHD can be great and also if you flip yourself upside down so if you do like a GHD crunch and just like let yourself hang over so it's like extension so it's almost like a bridge that can be a really nice stretch as well um, what about a, l a bit longer follow along session for a QL general stretching my right side is much tighter get it stronger don't stretch it that's just my advice with the ql it, it tends to work better uh, and again i've got a video on on that as well let's see the baby we want to see molly <laughs> she's not going to be pleased with you she's, she's dead asleep she'll probably just fall asleep in my lap actually i will i will go get molly i am i know a lot of people are tagging me on questions and i will get to the questions <laughs> as soon as i can i'm trying to give uh enough time to like everyone's questions that they ask 
Um, I lose motivation with flexibility routines because I don't see the improvement in the same sense as weightlifting. Any cues with regression? Maybe try weight training as your flexibility training. Things like Romanian deadlifts. Um, things like hanging leg raises are another good example of active flexibility. Uh, seated good mornings. All of these strength examples are a great way of increasing flexibility as well. And the focus is slightly different. So a little bit of stretching, but like that sort of stuff will get you a long way. What's up with the book club? Um, yeah, I, I, I am still doing the book club. Uh, I think I'm going to restart it in the new year because uh, up until Christmas, I just I haven't got time to, to do it, unfortunately. And I really like to, and I really enjoyed the like this interaction. I mean, I really enjoyed live streaming just for this particular reason, like reading. I read every single comment on, on my YouTube channel. I don't necessarily reply to every single one. I read every single one because I really like, I find that as a, you know, I love interacting and seeing what people have to say about the things that I have to say. And it's a good way to fact check, not fact check myself, but like, you know, check the things that I'm saying uh, or the opinions that I hold are, are fair. So um, I love it anyway. that's So that's why I'm doing this one as well. Uh, the book club will definitely be at so we can have some good conversations, um, but I'd like to properly dedicate the time to it. So in the new year, it will definitely be back. I think you look cute. That's that's very nice. Even with the mustache, I think you look cute too. <laughs> Can you grow a full beard? No, I haven't. Like, I haven't shaved here. There's there's nothing here. <laughs> uh, I just have an inability to grow hair anywhere that isn't. This is by the way. This is the best. Like this is my best mustache so far. This is this is this is a PB for me. <laughs> Previous years have been extremely noncy to say the least. <laughs> Uh, mustaches make most folks look like porn stars from back in the day. I can I can up that level actually. I think I think the combination of the uh, the blue blockers and the mustache like this is if I was going for a look I would be going for uh, if anyone's watched the gentleman Hugh Grant in that his character he's got like the goatee the orange glasses the, the you know big nonce vibes that's <laughs> that's what this one's at. Right, where did I get to? Where did I get to? I think. Did we decide on? Did we decide? Okay, let me get Molly. Molly will be a good one. Okay. Here we are. Oh, she. she <laughs> Wait. Excuse me. Wait a sec. I need you to say hi to the people on the stream. There you are. Say hi. She's she's tired. She wants to go back to sleep. Um, but there you are. That's that's Molly. Uh, I'm sh I'm sure she's been in in lots of videos. I think she had a whole video dedicated to herself. And your ego, eh? <laughs> she's just staring at me now. Like, why did you wake me up? Um. <laughs> yeah sorry about that right where do we get to on the questions um i'm just i can't i can't actually believe how many people are, are joining in. i thought this would be kind of a bit of a like a lower amount of people in the stream but it's really cool that everyone's coming to hang out um i'm also like prepared to not talk about just training stuff as well like if, if people wanted because that's kind of the point of the november stuff right is like to talk about anything um but obviously like if you have questions then i want to help out and i want to answer as best i can as well best fitness book to learn about programming nutrition bodyweight training and stretching i feel like that's going to be a hard book to find somebody i've really enjoyed the content of recently is the bioneer um i think he does oh wait, actually i was chatting to him as well because he's based in the uk so we're hopefully gonna catch up and talk all things training but i think he's got a really nice well-rounded approach to his training it's, it's more than just like bodyweight stuff um so i can't actually remember his name now so apologies for that but yeah i, I really like him Best books though. I don't think I, uh, there's definitely not a book that does all of those in one. <laughs> um, yeah, I would, you know, I think ultimately like this comes down to like applying lots of different stuff into one thing. So I'd kind of try and try things out. That's, that's become a, become a self experimenter. I think that's the best way to go about it. Hey, people who said hi. <laughs> 
I've been recovering from a groin hip flexor strain. Can only get a half squat under load. Do you have any advice for speeding up recovery? Um, I'm trying to use as much range of motion as I can. That's a fantastic start. Generally, for rehab stuff, we want to get stronger. We want to build up tolerance in that tissue. So make sure you're doing some strengthening, uh, certainly of that hip flexor. I actually... So if anyone's watched the, the video that I did with Daniel Vadden on Fitness FAQs when he came to the UK, we did a, we did a couple of training vlogs, did some handstands, and then we did a, a weighted leg session. In that weighted leg session, I actually had, or I, during the squats, I had a grade one tear to my hip flexor. <laughs> like literally during the video. Uh, and I didn't realize until the next day. So I, I, I know that pain quite well because um, Dan ruined me with some leg training because he doesn't mess about with leg training either. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I, like, I had a lot of pain doing squats since, and, and a lot of it was like, if you got like a kettlebell and then place like the, the, your foot through the kettlebell handle and then sort of do those, those raises like hip flexor raises, ankle weights as well. Uh, if you're in early stages of rehab, you could do it for resistance band lying down, just getting that sort of movement stronger. That will probably be the, uh, the, the better way to rehab, but ultimately make sure you check out with a physio as well. Six foot eleven here, jeez, man, that is tall. There's few people in life that make me feel small, but I'm sure for a fact you, I would feel tiny. <laughs> what do you think about realistic progression cap for basic compound movements? Looks like in about three to five years. One, I love the fact that you're like three to five years. That's a great time frame to think about with training. Um, I d it's hard to say, man. I think, um, so my opinion with tall being tall and training, I think straight arm movements are harder, bent arm movements generally will be easier so i think like you could probably get pretty damn strong with chin-ups um with handstand push-ups for example it's just going to take a, a while to get there and you need to think about how you can scale that with your height i think weights are probably going to be quite beneficial to you and i would also encourage you to build some muscle mass because it helps to fill out limbs and uh i think it's just a useful thing if you're taller anyway <laughs> do you drink milk um, <laughs> yes, I don't drink milk. I have coffee with milk, uh, like cappuccino or flat white or anything like that. Uh, what do you do to train your balance? I do handstands, obviously. Handstands are the best. Uh, apart from that, I, I don't know. I try to stand upright when I can. That helps with balance. Uh, you think press-ups or pushing exercises with arms flared out to a perpendicular is dangerous or are dangerous? Um, no. I, it's one of those things that's like, is it optimal? It's probably a better question, but nothing's really dangerous. No, no, no exercise is inherently dangerous. We just have an, an, a dangerous level of, of lack of a preparedness for that exercise. So an interesting thing about perfect form as well is some could argue that perfect form actually could lead to more injuries because when you do everything perfectly, you only ever build strength in a particular range. Uh, whereas, so, you, so, so for example, if you're always lifting with a neutral spine, you never actually build strength in a flex spine position. So actually, does that expose you to more or less risk? It's, it's actually an interesting uh, an interesting thought when it comes to your training. So sometimes perfect form isn't good. Sometimes I'll intentionally get people training push-ups. You have like Bulgarian ring push-ups with their arms out here. Sometimes those awkward angles are actually useful to train. Uh, but just like think about introducing them to yourself kind of easily. A bit quiet. Is it a bit quiet? Would you say it's quiet? Or does it sound a bit better now? Maybe I just have to have like my mouth in the mic. Sounds fine. All good. All good. Honestly, man, I like I live streaming is <laughs> is pure stress. Uh, it's not stressful. Like it's enjoyable, but if something goes wrong, man, it, it there's no editing your way out of that one. Just gonna slide past the question on what my opinion on veganism is. <laughs> um, my opinion of, uh, you know what? I'll save that for a bit. <laughs> um, thanks for doing the AMA. I've done lots of lifting, heavy lifting, and sitting at a desk with poor posture with these compacted spine and mid back. Any recommendation for back stretches? Uh, actually, I mean, you may feel like sitting at, with the rounded spine is uh hurting you but to be honest with you 
Um, there is actually a lack of evidence to support that in terms of the literature. It's an interesting one to, to note. Um, the, the biggest thing is lack of strength. So strengthening. But um, I think... I think the whole like next next uh, position is the best position sort of thing. Like try to change up your your day to day. Like if you can get a standing desk, you can pick them up really cheaply now. Get a standing desk so you can do standing, sitting, whatever. I think the the low low desk when you like sit on the floor is also quite nice. Um, but you know, change it up every half hour. Go for a walk. Do some hanging. I think hanging is one of the best things if you work at a desk. Like ultimately, I sit at a desk most of the time working because I'm editing a video or I'm or I'm answering stuff from writing programs. Like, I'm no difference there. Um, one thing I love: uh, best glute stretch ever. I think I've got a video on the best glute stretch. That's a really nice one if you sit a lot. Just helps loosen up that posterior hip capsule, especially if you like to man spread with your legs. Um, and then. Probably say something like a McKenzie push-up or something that gets you into extension, uh, like an upward dog sort of position. Moving around there, like kind of exploring that position would kind of be nice for, for if you're sat a lot. Um, do we do we venture into the veganism comments or are we just going <laughs> to... The veganism thing is a running joke on this channel by now. Yeah, kind of, kind of. <laughs> it's actually part of the reason I stopped doing dev eating, so I just couldn't be bothered with with uh having that conversation but you know uh right i'm sorry there's so many questions and i'm trying to get down to the bottom veganism is great but at the end of the day like, i really don't care what what other people do like if, if you if you feel good you keep doing that don't let anyone else tell you what to do um that's that's the main thing and it's highly individual as well like anything like anything right i'm trying to find where i got to um so how important is it to rest after a hard day of working out depends how you feel i guess ultimately um and i i would you know always try to be doing some form of movement every day um having a having a dog has been really useful for that just get outside and go for a walk it's a it's a, a great thing um and also you know a lot of recovery actually happens the day or subsequent days after training. So making sure you're still eating a lot. A lot of people change calories based on days of training and, and activity. Whereas actually the activity you do in a day, unless you're doing ridiculous amounts, makes very little impact on the amount of calories you actually need. So keep up the food as well is a big one if you want to recover well. Have you ever tried creatine? Uh, what do you think about it? Is it important, especially for skills, considering uh, extra weight gain? Uh, I have done creatine in the past, but I eat enough meat to not worry about creatine. Certainly if you're vegan, vegetarian, creatine's actually been shown to be very beneficial in those populations just because it's about five grams of creatine per kilo of meat-ish. Um, so yeah, creatine is a really good one. Probably one of the most solidly studied supplements as well. So you, you can't really go wrong. That doesn't need to be a loading period. doesn't mean to any of that. Three to five grams every single day. You can kind of take that consistently. There's There's been very little... To, to any uh, ill effects of that so that would be where i'd sit on things i did do that for a while uh just got out of the habit actually it was one thing i was thinking with this winter bulk series i was like should i start taking creatine again but i just i've been being lazy it's one more thing to think about right how do you learn how to renovate did you do a traineeship i didn't uh, i actually watched videos on youtube it was, it was the main thing um i've decided right <laughs> this is maybe not an accurate statement because there is definitely a skill to renovating and, and being a trains person, like without a doubt. The work that I've done versus when somebody comes in, like the difference is, is quite high. Obviously, like it gets better as you get on, but like what people do when they do it day to day, if you get a good trades person, is great. But honestly, I think it's about about sixty percent confidence, forty percent knowledge. Like if if you're confident with what you can do, like if you have the balls to do or try to do something and be prepared to fail a couple of times and mess things up. Uh, you're going to be fine with renovating. Just probably leave like the, the gas work, the electrical work, probably the plumbing as well. Leave those to the professionals, but other stuff like you can give it a go. And, and if you mess up, you mess up. You just waste some time and maybe a little bit of money. <laughs> well, on the most part anyway. Um, and also just learning from when you get trades in to, to do like just observe what they're doing or ask them if you can help out. Most people are really happy to have a hand because um, obviously it helps them out. Like obviously you want to get in their way, but offer, offer to give them a hand. Like can I, get you anything can i do anything for you if you if you really want to learn this is uh what's your take on intermittent fasting fantastic i personally do it every single day 
Um, I don't stick to any strict eating, eating area. I just eat when I'm hungry, but I don't think you need to eat all the time. I think that's kind of what intermittent fasting is saying. Uh, skills for open shoulders for handstands. Do more tucks. Tuck so you don't suck, as the uh, the Perf boys would say. That is that's probably the best one for that one. <laughs> Do you think nowadays that liberals are a greater danger to free speech than conservatives? Huh. <laughs> I'm gonna steer clear of that one. No, I think I think we've become extremely polarized. Both ends are just as bad as each other. We kind of need to agree. We're actually right. If you chat to most people, right? This. I'm I'm keenly interested in the political side of things. I don't particularly share a lot on YouTube because I'm not an expert and that's not necessarily the message I want to convene. I want to help people with their training, with their health and fitness. That's that's what I care about. I don't I don't care what else you believe in. Um but ultimately, if you talk to most people, you'll find that you have much more in common than than you disagree with. And maybe you disagree on a, on a couple of points, but I would probably say that 80% of it we all agree on. It's kind of how society functions. So um uh I'm trying to be more open to other people's opinions with that regard, but um, I think yeah, the, the the extremes are the bad bit. Jeez, man, I need to catch up with we're we're way off. I'm. Way <laughs> What's your take on possibility of vaccine mandates in the UK? I think telling people they should absolutely have to do something regarding to their body shouldn't be allowed, regardless. Uh, but yeah <laughs> why is everyone asking topics that are just like painful i, I said i'd have, I want to have an ama like a, an honest conversation but uh i mean i'd happily talk about it. again I, but i feel like i can't necessarily talk about these things because i'm not an expert in many of these fields um so i kind of feel like i'm talking out of my ass to some extent even though like i'm i'm interested and i, and I try to be as well read as i can do uh, around it it's just like when maybe <laughs> not that i think they're going to listen to the stuff that i say like i hope you take wise what i say like anyone else would say and, and think about it for yourself but i have a i feel like i have a certain responsibility that i if i say something that like i want to be confident that what i'm saying is a fair opinion um, which is why some of these some of these things are challenging to talk about uh, ama means ask me anything which is hopefully what this like i want to be point of this live stream is transparency i want to I want to chat about things that uh we can talk about training obviously ask me anything about your training i want to help out um, but anything else as well like i'd try and chat a little bit about anyway uh, i'm way behind on these questions where do we get to would a quick little warm-up before a mobility or flexibility session be beneficial would it result in faster progress um yes and no so on the most part no the work you do is the most important thing but if you have a decent warm-up you're more likely to be more flexible so then you can get to more ranges and make more progress. So I would say a little bit of flexibility, being warmer in general will help with your flexibility training, but it's not essential. Do you think you need supplements to training or uh, just a tool used by people who want to make quick gains? I think supplements is a great way to make money. It's not an essential to training by any means. There's certain supplements that you can't get outside of the fact that they're useful. Things like creatine, very well proven to be beneficial. Um, things like whey protein is just like a convenience thing is eating an, an actual protein source like eggs meat steak all of that sort of stuff is that better than whey probably it's a more complete amino acid profile uh, but is whey useful definitely so there's, there's lots of things that like supplements are useful but i personally don't take any supplements apart from magnesium at the moment i kind of cut everything out actually i'm going to do a video on this i did a video a while back but i didn't necessarily present it well and my thoughts have changed so i've got i want to i want to talk about this in depth because I, I, it's annoying seeing how many people market and, and rip people off around supplements so um yeah we'll, we'll talk about supplements in more detail in in the, in the near future have you tried rock climbing man i love rock climbing and it's something that i wish i would do more of i actually stopped rock climbing when i had um ulnar nerve compression so it's about five years ago so i had basically bad elbows i couldn't train for like a good year or so and that's when i stopped rock climbing at that point i was climbing maybe like spouldering like 7a ish so not great not bad i i knew a bit about climbing but that's like going back four or five years now um and i would like to go but again it's just like time <laughs> like uh, you don't have time to do everything unfortunately um and i'd like to get good at things and to be good at things you need to not do as many things you need to be focused 
So um, at the moment, this sort of training takes up all of my time. And as I mentioned earlier in the stream, I kind of want to do some judo and martial arts uh, to test out that aspect, which again, I do want to share that as well. I want to put it on the channel, but um, that was the main thing. Do you often see hernias from calisthenics? No, I don't. Um, I think often the hernias are associated more with the, like the high spinal loading stuff. Um, but again, I think there's a, there's some individual just like weakness to or susceptibility to to the hernias. Best calories deficit for cutting? Um, I don't know. I would. I prefer over calories to have like a target of adjustment or weight adjustment and then kind of base calories on that rather than saying this is the number you need to do It'd be like okay I want to lose this amount per week and then kind of tweak things to that maybe not doesn't need to stick to it exactly um, but I, I tend to not go for big deficits so I wouldn't never go like I'd never do like a, a thousand calorie deficit I just think it's stupid and it's not sustainable as well and sustainability is the most important thing for long-term implementations which is what matters so I would, I would go for small changes two three hundred calories um, see how you feel and if you are cutting what i'd recommend go higher with the protein generally speaking uh, i think the 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 evidence supports around two like going up to the point of like two to two point wait oh yeah per kilo yeah going up to like two to two to two point four <laughs> two to two point two grams per kilogram of weight uh so I'd, I'd have higher protein when cutting and i would do maybe like five or six days and then I would have like a refeed day or just a higher slightly higher calorie or close to the maintenance calorie day uh, and that generally helps keep things the weight loss certainly a little bit more consistent I think you should try sprint canoeing I've never heard of sprint canoeing but it sounds pretty fun uh, it just sounds cold at the moment <laughs> uh, when talking about planche and front lever especially uh, if I missed a question there oh yeah I have Grease the groove is best for handstands. I, I completely agree. When I was training one arm, I used to do like 20 minute sessions, 30 minute sessions a few times a day. That works really, really well. Um, I like that one. Oh man. Why is this, mate? You guys need to slow down. I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to answer questions as quick as I can. I'm like halfway down the chat. Um, regarding cutting can also recommend increasing protein yeah protein a lot of people under eat protein there's actually a, a really interesting study that literally came out like two or th right, like a week ago uh, and it showed uh, an inverse relationship with uh with meat consumption and protein consumption and uh, uh mortality so it's kind of an interesting one to put out there um, eat protein especially if you're older your protein synthesis your sensitivity to it goes down as well as you age All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna dip in and out of random points now because I'm so far behind. So I apologize. Answer faster. Fuck off, Emmett. <laughs> uh, where do we get to? I've passed I've passed the Tom Selleck comment. I don't actually know who Tom Selleck is. Am I just really uninformed? Tom Selleck. Now that that is a mustache. I don't think I've got anything quite as glorious as that one. Nancy is 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 more where we're at. Is Molly holding Dogecoin? <laughs> I like that one. That's good. Um, maybe Molly should hold Dogecoin. <laughs> uh, I did actually have some Dogecoin at one point. Terrible decision. That was that did not work out well for me. Will we ever train other calisthenics skills other than handstands? I, I try to train other stuff, man. Um, as I kind of went back to earlier, like I want to get good at stuff. And if you want to be good at things, you, you have to be a bit narrower in your focus or be extremely gifted. Um, you have so much resemblance from Otis from sex education in the best way possible. <laughs> do you know what? All right, I want to vote on this. Can I do a vote in the chat? Is that, I can do a poll. Yes. Right. So I've said this to a few people. And some people were like, yes, you look like Otis from Sex Education. And other people were like, absolutely not. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So uh, I'm going to put a poll up and you guys can vote. If you don't know who Otis from Sex Education is, um, what's his actual name? I don't remember. We're going to put it up anyway. 
you can vote on the poll you can i i think sometimes yes most of the time no what does ma mean man so many questions i didn't know <laughs> it's gone straight to no do you find the weight of the tash counterbalances the legs and planche that was actually the sole intention of growing the mustache i thought the more weight i can add to this area the the easier planche will become <laughs> so it's all about them them levers asa butterfield yeah that's his, that's his name i want to say milburn i'm pretty sure that's his actual surname in in is otis the black <laughs> no. oh god you guys have cracked me up i think dogecoin is, is the best comment so far i like that molly needs to get some dogecoin uh right i'm gonna jump back in regarding november i was always reluctant to talk about feelings because of masculinity uh this year after a breakup i opened up to them first time with some friends and it was quite relieving yeah i i do you know what like maybe maybe this is my opinion but i don't know if the whole like um don't talk about your feelings because you're a man thing is is um as much of a thing anymore certainly i like i feel quite confident talking about that but i think if you're talking to somebody oftentimes the most uh the most engaging conversations you have is when you talk at that deeper level or if you like open up to somebody and actually be you know honest transparent i think that's when you have the best conversations um and i've actually been making it a, a bit of a focus to be like i was one of those people who people are like you're right i'm like yeah i'm all right and that'd be the conversation like it, it kind of shuts things down like actually being open talking about things is a is a, is a yeah i don't know you have you just, you just have better conversations and you talk to people like that because if you're open the likelihood of that person is also going to be uh open to your openness and, and and share things back as well any exercises to increase the growth of the mustache um <laughs> as you can tell no but i would say that the the red light therapy on the balls has helped the testosterone production i feel like that's contributed to the mustache growth you know <laughs> get some get some sunshine on your balls and it'll improve your mustache growing after doing your middle split routines my progress has stopped still a long way to go but the pissing dog exercise does not get me past the limit any progress tips patience uh middle splits is just a is just a brutal one it does take time and also like progress is not not like linear it, it often time is stepped you'll have times of plateau do you know what actually i would recommend if you've been training like side split hard for maybe like a couple two three times a week for an extended period of time try having a week off and then coming back to it and seeing how it feels a lot of people will make good progress after taking a, like a deload from their flexibility training especially if you're doing heavy flexibility training like a few sets like training like strength training that deload can be very useful something i learned from emmett lewis if he's still in the chat roasting me which he probably is bioneer adam snicky yes adam uh, as i said earlier he's really i love i love what he's doing and what he's sharing and and the sort of like his integrating lots of different ideas of training in what order did you learn calisthenic skills? Um, I did your basic pull-ups and push-ups and that sort of thing. And then I went into like the front lever and planche. That was my main focus. Uh, and then the handstands was like the the kind of the, the latter bit that I ended up getting extremely carried away with. Why the higher amounts of fat? Tell us about your diet experience over the years. Um, hello. You're right. I think I think Molly's camera shy. Like usually, she loves to sit on my lap, but today she's she's not having it. She's not having it. Um. So the fat, the high fat thing was more just like personal preference, I guess. Uh, lots of experimenting over the years, figuring out what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Um, but that's always like where I've ended up settling into. So. And, and also like from the research that I've read, that seems to be aligned. Um, I quite like the Paul Check. There's also the Metabolic Typing, which is a book. Um, but Paul Check has his like uh, primal pattern dieting, I think it's called. But essentially it's like thinking about your genetic lineage and then like what sort of diet suits you. For example, being vegan in Scotland in the middle of winter doesn't make much sense. There's no light. You're not going to be able to grow vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. So modern living has enabled us to live or eat in certain ways. So I, like, I kind of try to respect roughly what I can get locally to me 
as kind of the way I can eat, and that's most of the time meat and fat, and so lower carb. A jacked version of Otis. <laughs> I appreciate. It. At the moment, it's it's no is winning. Um, so. <laughs> Can confirm beard makes front leave it easier. I did. I did suspect that that was that was it. I'll have to test my planche and, and see how it goes. What first pops into your mind when you think pancake? I think about the stretch instantly. I like th the amount of comments that have been left on like the pancake videos. Are like I was expecting something very different, um, but just yeah, I don't know if I've been conditioned to um, to think of that. But I also ha I haven't had pancakes in years because I don't really eat wheat, so I just don't make pancakes, which is which is pain. <laughs> Uh, do you still train upper lower split at the moment? I am doing a push and pull split for the muscle gain side of things, which is contrary to what I've said in the past. <gasps> um, but it's interesting. And Inter interesting on the most part, yes, upper and lower, pretty much always. How much do you time do you spend working out daily? Uh, I probably spend uh, at the moment about eight hours a week training. So maybe it works out to be an hour a day, but I probably only train four days a week at most at the moment. I don't know what the topic of this video is. I just want to say that the video on anterior pelvic tilt helped me a lot. Happy to help, man. There is no there is no topic to this video. It's just it's just chatting chatting shit. <laughs> some of the some of the messages that are being held for review are just ridiculous <laughs> and i don't think i can read that one out um speaking of sunshine on your balls have you ever been arrested for exposing yourself no no uh, not yet <laughs> is, is the mustache giving it away no uh no only only the postman What's your height and weight? I am six foot four hundred. Uh, I say six foot four. I'm like six foot three and a half. Can I say six foot four? Six foot four sounds better than six foot three. Um, 192 centimeters, 191, 192 centimeters, and about 90 kilos at the moment. Uh, all right, I'm gonna scroll back a little bit. What am I reading at the moment? Do you know what? I'm not reading anything, which is part of the reason why. The book club hasn't been a thing. I I haven't necessarily had the time, which is I started the book club because I wanted to have the time to uh to to read and then also like be accountable. And then since I've stopped, I haven't read. Um, bad, which is bad. I also haven't I haven't got a good book to read at the moment. I finished all the ones that I kind of wanted to read, and then the other ones are like uh, more training related stuff and um they're just reading felt and that makes reading feel more like a job or a chore anyway. Um, but I've, yeah, you have to have periods of like reading, learning, and then you need periods of applying. And I feel like I'm in an applying stage at the moment, or that's going to be my excuse for the moment. Do you do any cardio? I don't do any direct cardio. Um, I walk a fair bit. I always make sure I get like 10,000 steps a day, um, whether that's walking with the dog or just walking, doing stuff. But I don't do any direct cardio. That is... I've added that to next year's stuff. <laughs> I'm putting it off till putting it off till January, uh, but I I do need to do some cardio. I, I and it's but for me personally, I want to find something that I find inspired to do, uh, and I don't particularly feel inspired to do other forms of cardio. I'd, like running, I just genuinely would rather kill myself than go for a run. Um, so yeah, I need to. I, and I thought judo might be a good way to do some conditioning or or some 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 longer intensity sort of efforts. Curveball, what are your thoughts on watching TV ATM? Um, I don't actually really watch TV. Uh, I, t I mean, it's not like I don't spend my time watching stuff. I, I tend to watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> like I just, I mean, YouTube is like TV, but for stuff you, you really are interested in, I guess. So I, I like uh, watching a lot of YouTube. I'm actually midway through watching Money Heist, which I'm a little bit late to the show, but I think it's a good series. I'm enjoying that. Um, I don't really watch much TV otherwise. Not not out of anything else. I'm you just watching YouTube. That's that's literally it. Um, am I single? I am single. 
life is life is simple at the moment. <laughs> what are your thoughts on keto? Uh, I think keto is okay, but I think again, it's like there's not much evolution. Well, there's not much in terms of like if you think about it, a natural perspective, it doesn't make sense to like just slam fat as all you eat. Um, it doesn't make sense in terms of like a, a diet or maybe what we'd naturally eat you know there'd be a mixture of plants and based on seasonality you know if there's if it's summer there's going to be fruit available so eat some fruit um, i think that's kind of served humanity well for for several hundred thousand years so it probably would serve you well as well is my opinion yeah uh what is your daytime job my daytime this is my daytime job <laughs> what do you mean was my daytime job um yeah youtube it i guess youtube is my job but i also do coaching and i have an app and do some project like, lots of things but essentially this is my job yeah cardio is important for health and long jersey thank you for that charlie thank you for reminding me i i know i'm just lazy um yeah i've just as i said i haven't found anything that's inspiring me if anyone has some suggestions about some some cardio i should try and do let me know <laughs> took me about three months of persisting with running until it became fit enough to properly enjoy it maybe that is why i don't enjoy it just it, it sucks <laughs> will you ever collab with chris harrier uh <laughs> um maybe no probably not probably not i, I don't think we uh, we share aligning beliefs on these things but again each their own it's not my sort of content to be honest with you cycling cycling is a good form of cardio to be fair i i like that my my, my dad cycles a lot and um i've cycled him a couple of times uh but Again, I I can't go over the 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 groin area discomfort that is associated with cycling. It's just not super fun. Um, thoughts on ten thousand steps a day? Yeah, that's that's like at the moment that's my cardio. I just make sure like I walk with the dog Molly for an hour or so morning, and then sometimes in the afternoon as well. And I'm I'm generally moving throughout the day, uh, but I don't do any direct cardio. How about swimming? Uh, I would do swimming. I did do swimming for a bit, but because swimming is so upper body intensive, it wrecks like a lot of my other training uh, i couldn't do both at the same time or couldn't do both well at the same time cardio is not necessarily walking is enough i would tend to agree but i do think it's important to have some form of of cardio even if it's more in the state of like sprints um or strongman conditioning those sort of things i think there's a, an importance for like an elevated heart rate above what you'd get with with walking and different to what you get with strength training i think there is a need for that um or certainly, I think the evidence of the literature suggests that there is a need for that as well. Um, but that's, yeah, that, I mean, each their own. I, I haven't done a lot of cardio for a long time, so I, I, I know I need to do it, basically. Did you always want to be an influencer? <sighs> what was the cast? I, one, I'm not... I, I refuse to, to use the term influencer because... I just don't like it, man. I actually, so, um, so anyone who is interested in the, like the whole influence thing, I was listening to a podcast today uh, on trigonometry of a guy called Richard Gannon, and he was talking about narcissism um, and and sort of the influence on technology on narcissism. I, it was a really, in I'm, not, I'm only halfway through at the moment, thoroughly enjoying that interview. I think it's really, really good. Um, I don't want to be an influencer. I, I enjoy helping people. I enjoy making videos. Um, but I cannot stand the kind of influencer culture sort of stuff, man. It's it's weird. Um, like I I I admit that I don't know much, and I'm still very much learning. And um, yeah, I don't know. And uh, that's a whole. I I'd, I'd need to think more to like put my opinion on that into words. But yeah, I'm not a fan. I I wouldn't say I'm an influencer at all. Um, I'm definitely very fortunate, though, to make YouTube videos for a job. So I'm eternally grateful for that. But um, yeah, <laughs> digging myself a hole. Um, where do I get to? There was somebody else's question that I thought was good. Now we're into uh, when is your birthday? My birthday. I was that wasn't the question, by the way. <laughs> Fucking narcissist. Um, and my birthday is the 4th of September, if you if you care. Huberman says you should do some elevated heart rate cardio on top. Completely agree. And I think Andrew Huberman is a very interesting guy. 
uh, and a very smart guy. Somebody also asked what YouTube channels, podcasts are you liking at the moment? Love Andrew Huberman. Uh, I love the guys at Trigonometry as well. Some people love or hate them, but I think on the most part, uh, I would, I appreciate their openness to different opinions. Um, I was trying to think what other YouTube comment. Uh, what do I watch a lot of at the moment? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm just like mindlessly consuming stuff apparently. I'll get back to you. I have a think about stuff that I'm enjoying at the moment. Uh, as I said, oh yeah, Bioneer, Adam Snecky. I like him. I uh, like what he's doing. Um, I do enjoy a good Joe Delaney video. I just find him funny as well. I think he's a sound guy. I haven't I haven't listened to much podcast, to be honest. Um, I can't say that... Yeah, I can't say that I've listened, listened to much podcast. It's more just like it hasn't suited my workflow, you know? When I was driving a lot for a, for a job, I would listen to a lot of podcasts because I had time in a car to do that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> is your weed dealer younger than you? <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, where do we get to? If you need to mention one book that you think everyone would need to read, which one would it be? God damn. Some good questions. I really don't have a, an answer that is good enough to, uh, to, to answer that one. A good book everyone should read. I feel like everyone should read a book that covers the opposite opinion to what they hold. That would be the best book for them to read, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, like, almost going out your way to hear the opposite opinion, but like genuinely hear it and 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 read what they have to say or listen to what they have to say, and then like be like, okay, how does this compute with my opinions? And am I missing something that I didn't think about, or you know, are they just wrong? Because they could be wrong. <laughs> But yeah, I think that would be a good one. I would call you a mentor. I appreciate that. I, that, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't know enough to be a, a mentor. But yeah, certainly I, I I don't see myself as an influencer. I just want to help people out. Sensei. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can we can always. Maybe when I deserve the title. Um, do you feel connected to your audience or does it feel a bit like talking to no one when there's a surprise with other people recognized? you and the influence stuff no i feel very i actually feel really connected as i said i read every single comment on on uh on this channel so i i i, I use that a lot like i get a lot of satisfaction about hearing what people have been doing like whether they found the videos helpful or if they were like no this was shit man you you chat garbage and like i try to take it on um genuinely and i, and I, I like that's I, if i didn't have a a, a connection with my audience i don't know everyone in the, like specifically obviously but like i definitely recognize people who consistently come back and comment on the channel um and yeah like that's that's a major part of why i do this so absolutely i, I wouldn't do it otherwise what are your thoughts on cannabis i feel like i feel like several people have mentioned weed at some point in this um i think it is fine as long as you are past the age that your brain has developed fully i think that's you know i do think there are some you know you be aware that it's not a it's not a zero sum game it's not like good or bad um and if you think it's good it doesn't mean that there isn't bad effects of it um and it's at the end of the day i think for some people it can still fill a space that could be negative but certainly if you um I think it, it depends on how you have a relationship with you. It would be where I'd sit on things, but I don't think it's a, a, a net negative, you know, in that in that regard. I wouldn't I wouldn't shun it. I just think you need to be mindful about how how you would to to use it, because it could easily be abused, like anything else, like alcohol, like caffeine. If you don't think about it either. Do you think mental health is important? Absolutely. I think it's it is the most important thing, um, and I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but it generally is. Um, to the extent like you know you should i think it's important to be able to sit alone and just be able to be and and and, and be happy with your own presence uh, as, as a fundamental starting point but yeah um if you read anything like Dostoevsky or george orwell anything like that you're you're that you have control of what goes on in here very little control of, of other things so 
I think I think mental health is an important one, but certainly not an easy one to understand. It takes a lot of years, and I certainly don't think that I'm at, at that point that you know. As I said, I wanted to make a video about it, but I don't feel like I have enough understanding to talk in depth about it. So that's why I wanted to reach out. Actually, it's a good question to you. If you have any recommendations um, of people that you think navigate the topic of mental health well, um, then please let me know. Leave it in the chat and I'll do my best to kind of, I want to ha do like a sort of collaborative video with a few different people so there's some different opinions to talk about like, mental health and then also like its relationship to physical fitness because i think um training is a fantastic way of, of of improving mental health there's obviously been lots of studies on it but also from more of a woo-woo perspective uh, i think it has a, a lot of self-confidence building aspects i'm sure many of us have <laughs> invite joe rogan yeah <laughs> oh man yeah anyway that's i would love to love to chat a little bit about that but again it's not something that i know a lot of um what was my favorite topic at school was I did graphics like that's what I did as a degree I did design so that's that was my favorite topic at school and and partly because the teacher who taught me uh, was particularly inspiring and like really just loved he, you know sometimes you have those teachers at school like regards to the subject they just make that subject really good they're the sort of people that you want to teach everything um so yeah he was a he was a really, great, really great teacher had a great you know ultimately helped me get into uni and do all that sort of stuff do I practice Wim Hof? I do cold water exposure, but I don't practice Wim Hof. I actually had a funny story. Uh, the last time I did Wim Hof training, I was on the beach. I was sat down. I was doing the breathing like, <sighs> well, through the nose. <laughs> you know, the, the, essentially the hyperventilating. And um, I think I was on like the third round of it. And then I finished it and I went to stand up and I just like, I, I just don't remember anything else. And then I woke up and I was lying on the ground just on the beach. <laughs> so I, I basically, I made myself pass out from doing uh, the Wim Hof breathing. And I was like, after that, I was like, probably not the best idea because if this was when I was in the water, that would have ended very badly. So um, I do like Wim Hof, but I think it's like, a, it's an advanced breathing technique and um, maybe maybe it's worth developing stuff beforehand or breathing in, in different ways beforehand. Uh, the breathing cure book that I read talks a lot about breath holds as a way of improving cold exposure slightly different approach to whim uh, but but essentially the same thing somebody said yeah do you any plans on doing mma like dominic sky um dom's just too much of a beast for me to keep up with uh i do plan on doing some judo as i mentioned a couple of times in the stream already so sort of mma ish it's not not jits i want to do some grappling basically um, I feel like that would be fun and it would feel a void in my training, certainly. Caroline Leaf, I don't know who she is. I would definitely make sure. Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. I've seen a lot of Hybrid Calisthenics sort of popping about and I've, I've not actually checked them out personally. So um, I will definitely look into that. Cole Hastings, Healthy Gamer GG. Favorite female calisthenics on YouTube? Uh, you know what? I'll be straight up. I don't watch. Oh, well, I do watch one female calisthenics on YouTube. Well, I watch uh, Rosie Burr. She's, I guess, she, is she calisthenics? She's kind of more contortion, hand balancing. I think Rosie's great. She's got a real positive attitude. I'm actually, again, supposed to be catching up and, and doing some videos with her as well. Uh, if you have a female calisthenics person that I should watch, then let me know because I'm unaware of, of, of that space, to be honest with you. Tommy should go with the Shaolin monks for a year. I think I would. I would be ruined. I think I'd be ruined. They'd, they'd destroy me. Some people are just ridiculous. They're too, they're too much of a beast. Do you sing karaoke, dance, have rhythm? I have none of the above. I am. I'm good with logical things. Bad with creativity. Sorts of. Uh, I can't sing. Anyway, draw the line. Definitely cannot sing. Dancing, I have been told is not very good. <laughs> And rhythm, uh, maybe, maybe. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, just generally not. Um, you only watch one female calisthenics YouTuber. Why do you hate women? <laughs> uh, I don't hate women. Uh, I just don't know any. <laughs> also, I understood that comment was sarcasm. Um, do you have any collabs in the pipeline? So, okay. I want to get your opinion. Actually, I'm going to cancel the, the, the Otis. We had 200 votes. 52% said yes. 48% said no. I feel like that's, that's pretty 50. That's kind of what I've experienced in person as well. Um, 
Yes, Calabrians, I'd love to get your opinion on this one. So, Rosie Burr, if you don't know who Rosie Burr is, well worth uh, checking her out as well. She um, she does some good videos. She's does. I mean, she's a great hand balancer and does contortion stuff. So if you want to do flexibility, like her flexibility is ridiculous. Um, so Rosie, uh, I want to make some videos with Bionir, so Adam Snecky. Um, is hybrid calisthenics, is, is he in the UK? Because um, I'd love to make some videos with him. There's some other people outside of that, but like traveling is just really challenging at the moment. Um, maybe we'll do some virtual stuff. But yeah, if there's anyone that you think would be a cool collaboration, obviously somebody mentioned calisthenic movements I read. Um, and I have read out to them and they ignored me. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't, again I don't think that's their fault I think they're just like super busy um, but I got, I got blanked by them uh, yeah any any, any recommendations let me know collab with Asa Butterfield get him get him to his I'd, I'd love to do that that'd be funny am I a sports fan uh, not massively i mean i appreciate it i watch rugby that would be the only sport that i really watch um i'll watch england play rugby and otherwise not really abnormal beings yeah abnormal beings is based in london i believe isn't he um yeah i have I actually have spoken to abnormal beings and lucy liz moore she's also london based um does hands hands oh she does female she's a female cast i chat to her somewhat frequently so um okay cool appreciate those recommendations austin dunham um i don't uh, to be fair i don't know what austin's doing these days i haven't really seen him produce much content maybe i'm just not aware um geek climber i actually mentioned um i don't know his name either but geek climber i mentioned him in a video fairly recently and i think the sort of videos he's making are great i love like i think they they hit a really good tone um so love what he's doing as well i think he's an, another con good content creator joe delaney i'd love to i'd love to collab with joe um i keep mentioning it to him and he's like ah maybe maybe another day he, he seems reluctant but maybe maybe we'll make it happen uh Stephen Lowe. Hello, mate. You all right? Nice. Molly has decided that she wants to, uh, she wants to join the chat. Um, Stephen Lowe. Stephen Lowe would be an interesting one to chat to. Like, even just to do a podcast with, I think that would be fascinating. Um, will you be doing more hands down workshops in the future? Absolutely. We would, I'd love to come back to the US got them this weekend in london if you are in london and you want to join we've got handstand and bodyweight strength and flexibility workshop um but yeah we want to uh, probably in europe in next year and then maybe the us but currently the us isn't really letting anyone in to the country which is um challenging strength side um i haven't spoken to him but i know exactly who he is he does i th I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna call out anyone out, but I've seen him produce quite a few videos that are very similar to the ones that I've made in the past. Um, but I think again, he he does some some good content as well. Oh, well, on. you got your you came to hear from one of Joey's videos. I know Joey. Uh, so the reason I mentioned Joe Delaney is like obviously I followed him when I was into like bodybuilding and um, that sort of thing. Um, but he, I also saw that he said that he does some of my follow alongs in one of his videos. So I was like, that's freaking cool so um maybe maybe we do some stretching with joe uh how heavy is molly molly is like six six kilos now no wait how old, how are you on the bulk she is on the bulk she's she sat down here she doesn't want it she doesn't want to be in the camera i think i think she's camera shy uh now wilson now wilson would be an interesting one I actually did reach out to Niall probably a year or so ago. I wanted to do a podcast because at the moment, I, at the time I was going for an injury and I wanted to chat to him about, like, because obviously he's been for a lot, you know, he's had that neck surgery and stuff. And I really wanted to ask him about his sort of attitude to injury. Um, but I just kind of got a blank reply from, I think his manager or something. It was like, they weren't, they weren't interested basically, which is sad. But I'm sure Niall seems like a fun guy. So maybe <laughs> Eddie, or, Eddie Hall. I need Eddie Hall to teach me how to bulk. <laughs> oh man, that guy's. Um, actually, I was chatting to somebody. Who's, who's going to be watching the Eddie Hall uh, boxing match? That would be that would be hilarious. 
What is Daniel Vandal like in person? He's strong as fuck. One of the best Counter-Snake channels around. I do agree. Dan makes... Dan makes great content. Like, he just makes... He makes the most professional stuff on YouTube. Like, it's just... It's good quality information as well. Like, although sometimes he goes for the clickbaity... Uh, the clickbaity, uh, like, icons or thumbnails or whatever. Like, the, the, the information is always quality. Uh, but Dan is... Dan is exactly like he is on the videos. And uh, he's, he's a, really, like, a really genuine guy. Uh, just very straight up absolutely loves training trains hard as well like when i did that session with him in london i was like damn damn let's, let's, like train hard he's uh, i can see why he's a beast um damn daniel <laughs> uh so yeah dan dan is a really nice guy very genuine to be honest with you in the calisthenic space i haven't met that many people who i think are like addicts or anything i think that the quality of content is is pretty good like most people seem to and and there also seems to be a good bullshit meter in casmex as well like i don't know whether the the information is just so readily available that people are like that's bullshit and they just call it out so uh, i do love that how do i even begin handstands which is the best video to watch i do have a how to handstand video that goes over it all. I think there's also a routine in there. I do have a handstand follow along routine, which is it's okay. It's a good one. Just like if you if you really have no idea where to start, then just do that because you just have to stick it on, follow along, and get it done. Because ultimately, the most important thing is the work that you do at the end of the day, isn't it? Uh, Tau physique also cool. Yeah. Thoughts on Derek? More plates, more dates. I do watch occasionally. Um, more plates, more dates. He's funny. <laughs> he's just he's just a funny guy. Like I love the fact that he sits in this sauna and he's got like a million subs. <laughs> he just sits in the sauna and chats shit on the internet about people taking steroids. Um, yeah, he's great. Do you use zero momentum in doing toes to bar? Um, yes, ideally you use zero momentum. If if you need a bit of a kip, it's not the end of the world. Uh, getting the reps in is the main thing. Damn, it's 20 past. I think I'm going to call this a day soon. So, um, first of all, as I said I would, let me donate to Movember. I'm going to donate to my own link, I think, can I? Right. Sorry. I'm not very good at multitasking. Marcus Bondi is the guy in Australia, right? Who has like some world records. He's ridiculous. I don't, I haven't, t not, uh, don't know him too well. Tips for making better calisthenics content from John. Yeah. You guys should go check out John's video. I did, uh, John made a video about training to paleo calisthenics and he's done a lot of other good content. So go check out John. He's great. Um, but he has a point. It's hard to make calisthenics content because ultimately there's so much good information out there already. So. Um, I think you kind of got to put your own spin on things. I really like the advice that Tim Ferriss had. Like I remember years ago, maybe with his like four hour workweek stuff, he was always like, take three things that you enjoy or are passionate about and combine them in a unique way to make like your own thing. Um, so I feel like that's somewhat what I've done unintentionally, but you know, you don't have to, there's no point repeating the same thing that everyone else has done. Um, I always think like one is like, okay, do you, do you go on the route of like sharing your personality, sharing more about um you know what you're doing your training stuff which is kind of how i started youtube i just was like sharing myself training body by rings and things um or if you get on the educational stuff it's like okay how do you make things really accessible for people how do you make information really easy to understand and digest i think that would be the best way to do it how many subscribers do i have at the moment is it... can somebody tell me how many subscribers i have so i can do this donation It was great getting to know a little bit more about you outside of working out. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks for joining the live stream. I appreciate it. I know I don't want to talk about myself, but that was kind of the 703. We're good. Okay, 703 is how much we're going to donate. Uh, okay, we're going to do that donation. Um, as I said, if you want to donate, obviously, I think November is a great cause. I think we need to talk more about... Or, or okay, I'm just going to be more open about how we're feeling, how we're doing, and, and and find somebody to chat to. Obviously, if you have a friend who maybe doesn't talk too much about themselves, try asking them some questions. Or if you know somebody who's struggling, reach out to them, have a chat, give them a phone call, meet up with them, have a drink, have a coffee. Coffee's the best thing. But um, 
certainly try to be there for for a friend they will definitely appreciate it and i'm sure maybe you have some hard times they'll be there for you um other than that i'm going to wrap this up in the next five minutes or so so any last questions um yeah let me know and i will do my best to answer them otherwise i'm going to donate now and call it a day dun, dun, dun. Oh man, that was a donation. Thanks very much for the donation. I didn't even realize that was a thing on YouTube, to be fair. Um, coffee always. I always do your three stretches every day. Terra's minor tricep Ari arse wipage. Lol. <laughs> what? I, I don't know what this, this donation is for. Yes, I mean right arm from behind. Do you know what? I appreciate the five pounds. I have no idea what you're talking about, but yeah. Thanks, man, for that. Weird question. But if I work out at the same time... Oh, crap. Dog is chewing. Stop chewing the cables. You've been so good so far. <laughs> um, but if I work out the same and just add more oil to my diet, would I gain muscle or would I just get fat? You shouldn't gain fat, man. I mean, like, if you add more oil, you're adding more calories. Calories is important for muscle gain. But ultimately, we need to be making sure we're, we're maintaining adequate protein as well is going to be one of the most important things for the muscle mass side of things. Uh, please let us know your opinion on veganism. Do you know what? Give me two minutes and I'll give you my opinion. <laughs> um, how would you go about training for the muscle up with only a doorway pull up bar? I'd get really strong at pull ups, basically. It, 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 that's all I'd do. You know, ultimately, the, the muscle up is a, is a pull up. And then I would also give. If you check out one of my more recent videos, I think there's one on the three chin-up progressions you're not doing or something. In there, there's something called a grip and rip chin-up. It's great for improving explosivity. That will that with like getting strong weighted chin-ups will probably get you there for a muscle-up without ever actually training it. Um, thank you, David. I appreciate the kind words. Appreciate that one. Just wondering, do you get a lot of fans at your gym? I very rarely, I might get the odd person who says like, oh, I've watched your YouTube videos and um generally ask them about how they've gone and have, have a quick chat but it, it's the rarity i think most people probably just look at me and like who's the weird guy doing handstands in the corner do you ever doubt yourself trying to achieve bodyweight goals um yes and no the only thing i've had that with has been one arm it just felt impossible but you know i feel like patience and uh and and consistency goes goes a very long way oh, i lost the ability to wipe my ass for 10 years ago but got it down to the terrace minor and tricep longest with your bits well i'm happy to help with your ass wiping <laughs> i hope that's a genuine question do you have a wife no i'm single uh looks like a stylish mustache i appreciate that ben <laughs> i feel like you're you're in the minority there do you have any advice for recovery after forearm splints with plants training i got parallettes uh yeah it's just one of those things you just gotta take time do lots of pumpy forearm training as well. Um, feels good for, for forearm splints. Do I know if Dan was ever able to do a front pull up? No, I don't know if he was, but I feel like he's definitely strong enough to do it. Right. Uh, where can we get those amazingly great? So the shorts that I use are, I've, this one seems to be one of the more recent questions as well. Let me go. They're called Volcom Surf and Turf. Um, that's the name of the shorts anyway. And... They're like, uh, they're board shorts, but then they also look reasonable if you wear them normally. And, um, oh, I still haven't donated. Well, let me just finish this. Donate. Done. Oh, I need to. Um, yeah, they're really good pair of shorts anyway. Highly recommend them. But I think you can only get them in the US, which is a little bit of a pain. Right. Last one was about the veganism side of things. Um, <laughs> this could be a whole video in and of itself so number one i feel like the fact that veganism is the optimal diet just is a fallacy by itself certainly emerging evidence is is supporting that as well meat eating is not bad for you highest life expectancy in the world hong kong also coincidentally have the highest meat consumption in the world so i think it's about a kilo a day on average 
have to fact check me that one, but I believe I'm about right. Um, also, in terms of the environment side of things, um, it's important to consider what you see online as propaganda and then in reality how things work. Um, first, okay, from, from the, the, the carbon emission side of things, um, in the UK anyway, animal agriculture contributes about 4% of greenhouse gas emissions. It's not a very big uh, contribution in the grand scheme of things in comparison to, say, energy production, which is like 40%. I think transportation is about 40% as well. There's, there's many other things that we could be doing to tackle climate change that is outside of animal agriculture. It plays a very insignificant part, certainly from, from, from what I can understand anyway, that isn't blown out of proportion from uh, propaganda on on netflix like if you get your dietary recommendations from netflix i'm sorry but we can't have a conversation about dietary choices on that level um yeah if your reason is carbon emissions then buy locally grown meat absolutely I, I, I don't buy meat from anywhere so i talked about earlier about buying local partly that is you know for health reasons think about it if we didn't have if, you, if you're air freighting mango over from africa like that is not it that, like that's vegan it's not environmentally friendly it probably doesn't make any sense as well um so yeah really the the whole veganism thing is is uh i would love to get some more intelligent people to have this conversation but um certainly i think many of the claims that are made are overhyped and again it's 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 part of a i don't know i don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna sound uh <laughs> gonna go conspiratorial. But yeah, anyway. So I think a lot of the claims made by veganism is, is just overhyped. And certainly when it comes to health perspective, the whole idea of like eating an egg is the same as smoking three cigarettes is just absolute bollocks. Absolute bollocks. Um and and <laughs> there's so many more examples of that. Eggs are a superfood, fantastic source of choline, fat soluble vitamins, high quality protein. Um there's you know Meat is a, is a fantastic source of nutrition as well. Fantastic source of many micronutrients as well as you know bioavailable amino acids. Like beef liver is arguably one of the most nutritious foods that you can consume. So I think there's a lot more to have a conversation other than like meat is bad for you. Um, but then there's the whole you know uh, argument around like do you think it's okay to kill animals for food? And I think that's probably the strongest argument for veganism, and that's down to a personal one. But anyway. Um, without wanting to piss too many people off, uh, I would want to be transparent about that. And I think I've talked about this in many videos, so it's not, it's not anything new. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day and I haven't ruined your day if you're a vegan and, and you're on the, and you're on the channel. Um, I don't care if you're vegan. I'm, I think everyone has the right to, to live how they choose. So I support your decision. I hope you respect my opinion. I respect yours. Um, and that's kind of how I try to go about this anyway. But yeah, thank you very much for everyone who joined in. I can't believe how many people joined in with the chat. That was awesome. I really enjoyed reading through and I hoped I tried to answer as many people's questions as I could. Um, I know I didn't get to everyone. I apologize for that, but maybe we'll do another one at some point. Certainly there'll be a book club coming back. Uh, last one. Sorry, there's a, a super chat. Passive house video by you soon. Net zero living. I, I I would love that would be an absolute dream would be to have a, a small holding and, and, a, and a, but that's a, a long way away for me. Right. We're going to cut things off here. Love you all. Stay safe. Um, stay strong, both in the gym and mentally as well. Chat to some people. If you have any issues, speak to somebody, grab a, gr grab a friend and ask them how they're doing as well. Um, yeah. Thank you again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a strong week and 